I never understood why humans were always so fascinated with the stars. I didn't understand until they were able to conquer them. Their fascination grew to be an obsession. Planet after planet, solar system after solar system, humanity spread across the galaxy like a parasite. When a group of planet scouts found life for the first time, it didn't even slow them down. Anything that didn't taste good or wasn't immediately docile was killed on the spot. They terraformed the land to suit their needs, depleting the resources and killing the planet, just like they did to Earth. Scientists and researchers were the first sent to occupy places such as the Moon and Mars. Years were spent perfecting life-supporting technology on the Moon before any civilians were allowed to occupy space. After the Moon base's success, the government sent another team of astronauts to do the same on Mars. The Moon was to be used as a refueling and rest stop on the way to Mars. Once both the Moon and Mars colonies were populated with government workers, they allowed trips for anyone who could afford it. But when the people who could afford it didn't immediately move to Mars, they thought commercial spaceflight was a flop. How wrong did they have it? The rich had secretly been reserving seats for the right moment to leave. The rich and powerful were the first to leave, abandoning the planet their corporations killed. People panicked and many began saving for their very own trip to Mars. Some who couldn't afford the whole trip to Mars chose to live on the moon and one day save enough to go to Mars. Although not initially intended, the moon grew to its own civilization as well as life support technology advanced. Many even took out loans that would be paid off at a government appointed job when arriving at either Mars or the moon base. Wave by wave, humans that could afford it left and began populating the Mars and moon base, leaving the poor to fend for themselves on Earth. For generations, Mars shared everything with Earth. Every technological advancement Mars had, they shared with Earth and vice versa. As the colonies grew, it wasn't long before the first Martian and Moon men were born, and before you knew it, they had become planet-wide takeovers. Terraforming technology developed for the Mars project in order to make the planet more hospitable was ironically never used on Earth at the same scale as on Mars. Everything was going well until the Martians had an idea for a weapon. They claimed it was to protect themselves from any other species that might wish to invade the solar system. After all, if humans can travel to other planets, then maybe there are life forms that can travel galaxies. Earth told them to exterminate the project, but the leaders of Mars realized that they no longer needed a relationship with Earth to survive and decided to cut ties with them. Earth, knowing they were attempting to develop interplanetary weapons, realized they also needed to build their very own weapons in order to protect themselves not from aliens but against Mars. And so began the planetary Cold War. Mars and Earth have ceased all communications. Mars has become fully autonomous and independent from Earth. The people of the moon still consider themselves as part of the Earth and allied with Earth. Each planet has a racist attitude towards the other planet despite being equally as advanced. You can only imagine how the Martians felt when Earth beat them to harnessing the power of the planet. A baseball bat was designed to hit baseballs going 90 miles per hour. 6,000 to 8,000 pounds of force is required in order to change the direction and speed of the ball to 110 miles per hour. That's 6,000 to 8,000 pounds of force the bat can withstand. Although not intended as one, it hasn't stopped many from using a baseball bat as a weapon. When scientists found a way to harness the power of a planet, we thought it was to power our cities. But not to my surprise, it was also used to power weapons, the near limitless energy from planets in the hands of the government. When a species achieves full control of its planet's power, that species is classified as a type 1 civilization on the Kardashev scale. Harnessing the power of one's planet comes with the realization that you can harness the power of other planets. Mars knew that they needed to act fast. The new race was afoot and Mars was still at the starting line. All resources and manpower went towards building a Dyson Sphere, for Mars believed whoever ruled the Sun ruled the solar system. As you may know, there is only but one star in this solar system, and although it could power both planets for billions of years, people still haven't managed to evolve past their greed. Mars took full control of the Sun and allowed the Earth to siphon the energy for a price. 
Earth attacking Mars will cause them to lose the energy they get from the sun and would have to solely rely on their planet's own power. Or would they? Two planets, three civilizations, and one star with enough room for only one Dyson Sphere. A megastructure that surrounds a star in order to absorb its energy. Although Mars had beaten Earth to the sun, there was still a whole universe out there with an infinite amount of planets and an infinite amount of stars to conquer. As of today, we believe to be alone in the universe, and so it seems as though our endeavors will go unobstructed. Is the fate of the Earth really the fate of the galaxy?